A very good morning to you. This is Bob Martin, the RC Sub Guy with the Nautilus Dry Docks. It's April 1st, and this is the first uh, of this weekly update that you are going to see. If this is the first time joining my channel. This is what we do, let you know what we did throughout the course of the week, how we did it, all of our successes, failures, and everything in between. Uh, and uh, obviously, this is all about RC submarines. Let's get started. So off to a rocky start this morning. Uh, Logan didn't, is not feeling well. He's uh, going to be taking the day off. So it's just me in the shop unless I can talk Jason into coming in and giving me a hand, which would be great because we got a bunch of stuff that we need to get shipped out. I have a stack of orders about this big that we need to get all boxed up and weigh bells and brought out. But uh, I have already unpacked a bunch of stuff that came in that is going to be going up on the site. So if by the time you see this, um, it's still available. Obviously you can uh, grab it. And if not, you'll have seen what you missed. So what we got here, this is Logan's Kilo. Now this is already sold, uh, to a good, uh, customer and we're going to be pulling out the VEX radio er, over there that came with it. And we're going to be putting in a 900 megahertz receiver. Cause that's what he wants uh, and packaging up a couple of other things for it. So that's all going to get boxed up and shipped out. Hopefully today, we'll see. If not tomorrow, well, I'll make Logan do it. It's his boat. Um, but these are the other two things that I just unpacked. So this is a 96 scale Sturgeon. Uh, beautiful model. Uh, in the listing, you'll see all the pictures and everything of everything that comes with it. I'm not entirely sure who made this. Um, it, the, the layup is beautiful. There's an awesome uh, orientation lip or alignment lip around the entire perimeter. That looks really good. And the castings, the resin castings for all of the control surfaces and the sail are absolutely gorgeous in this. Uh, I'll put the link in the description. You can go ahead and take a look at that. But uh, beautiful, beautiful boat, a very nice size. Now Sturgeon is probably one of the best running boats that you can hope for. Uh, beautiful boat. Um, and then in the background here, we've got a Kilo. Now this is 96 scale, 96 scale, 72nd scale. Now, when I bought this, I wasn't entirely sure what I was getting. Um, this is a fiberglass hull kit with a, uh, a whole bunch of, 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 of arc model parts. Now, I wasn't sure if this was an arc model kit or not. I was under the impression that this, the arc model did all plastic model kits, but this is definitely uh, fiberglass. Um, regardless, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, comes with photo etch, um, all of the control surfaces and everything. I think the only thing it doesn't have with it is the propeller, which should be easy enough to get a hold of. But this too will be uh, listed up for sale. It ends up at about 40 inches in overall length. This would be a perfect candidate for our 300 series sub driver. This would be a perfect candidate for our 250 series. And I'll put the information in the product listings. Again, hopefully it's still around if you're interested. Um, and if not, then, uh, sorry, these things sell <laughs> super quick. You need to make sure and keep checking my website every single day, many times a day. Something else that's gonna be coming through here, I already sold two of these, but these are the ARC model piston tank watertight cylinder kits. Now. Um, I'm waiting on another shipment that has the, the actual tube body and everything for this. I don't know if it's complete or not. This is just going to be sold as a, as a, 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 an experimenters kit. There's tons of electronics, motor modules, piston tanks, uh, electronics with the, uh, controllers, um, LEDs, diodes, connectors, uh, all sorts of things. So that's going to be going up here right away as well. I did get some good news from my good customer, Stan, over in Florida, and we uh, did some horse trading and back and forth thing and all of that stuff. So uh, he owned that big sea hunt that we had in the back there. So that's it right there. And this probably doesn't convey to you the size of this, but this thing is six feet long. But I was stressing out because I basically only got like 10 or 12 days in the shop before I need to hop in the vehicle with sub ed portal, uh, coming up here the third week of April. 
uh, and heading out to deliver all of these boats, the Akula, the Sea View, um, that gigantic other Sea View for another customer and a Disney Nautilus display model uh, to Florida as well. Um, but I did not think I was going to be able to get Sea Hoon done. And it just worked out that uh, he said, you know what, put that on the back burner. We're going to horse trade. I know I already paid for this. I'm going to put it towards some other invoices. We'll put the Sea Hoon on the back burner. So that will come up either for sale to him as a first right of re refusal or open up to you guys if you're after a gigantic six foot Sea Hoon with individually controllable RC torpedoes. That <laughs> is something that could probably be uh, rigged up for you. But uh, that means that's been taken off my plate. I can focus on Billy the Shark and that big sea view. Those are my two focuses. I want this thing done in the next couple of days so I can work on uh, the big sea view and then I can breathe a sigh of relief. Look who's here. Hi. <laughs> We're gonna get a lot done today. Um, but I wanted to show you Billy and how the thrusters and eyeballs are all set up. Okay, so um, obviously you can see those gargantuan thrusters in there, but I'm gonna pull it back to something like this so you can see what goes on. So each of these motors is run through a throttle jockey unit, which mixes the throttles with the rudder. And that's how all the other sharks are set up too. So in full forward, the thrusters spin counterclockwise and in full reverse they do the same thing and then if I go like right and left they'll spin the same direction which is opposite because they're opposite propellers but the neat thing about this is that this um, the eyes are actually set up with a throttle <laughs> So the faster you get him up and going, the brighter his eyeballs shine. Which is pretty cool. And the thing about the radio is if you didn't want it on the throttle, you could put it on a switch, you could put it on a dial, you could put it on another stick, you could do whatever you want with it. So, super cool. Now, we gotta rig up these fins, and once the fins are done, it's gonna be ready for trimming. So, Typical Monday, um, the whole morning and into the afternoon is spent packing up stuff and uh, getting orders ready to go. We got two big boats. Uh, these are going out. That was the uh, 30 second type seven. Actually, these are both 30 second type sevens. One fully assembled and painted and one is a kit to a cylinder and all sorts of stuff in there. And we got just a couple more packages ready to go. Poor UPS guy is going to have a coronary when he shows up here today. But uh, yeah, you can see that was a lot of work getting it all packed up. So yeah, typical Monday. Not a lot done in the shop here yet. But I'm going to see if I can figure out this uh, whole servo situation on Billy the Shark and uh, get something done in terms of a build. I guess I got a little bit done. I got the thrusters done. So. I gotta be happy with that. And it's another day, Tuesday morning. Um, Logan is out uh, cleaning up, getting ready to bring in Sea View or work on Sea View, the big Sea View, which we have to have done within the next couple of weeks. I think we can do it. It's gonna be awesome. Um, I am forging ahead with Billy, who looks like he's been disemboweled on the workbench uh, over there. Um, but I wanna show you what I've rigged up so far with the linkages. All right, what we've got here is uh, a bunch of stuff. Now, if you remember correctly, originally I was looking at using these little Actuonics linear servos. And if we, if we fire this thing up, you'll see how that works. It's all proportional. It's not very accurate. Like I can twist, you can see the numbers changing on my uh, tester there with no results from the servo. Um, stroke is about an inch, which isn't too bad, but what I'm really worried about is the torque. And these would probably be okay, but my challenge was making these waterproof. Now, originally I was going to kind of put like a condom sort of idea over this and waterproof it. I, I don't know how well that was going to work. Um, but what I came up with was going back to these bad boys right here. I get these off Amazon. 
They're 35 kilogram servos, digital coreless metal gear servos. Ignore that waterproof. That these things are not remotely waterproof. So don't don't think you're going to be getting away with anything. Um, so what I made, I made these 3D printed enclosures. You can see I got one done and I'm, I've got the other one undone so you can see how that looks. So this drops in place. We got the cable coming out here. The lid goes down. You seal it. And then I've got these little eighth inch seal assemblies that drop down over the top. Those glue in place and you've got a waterproof enclosure. So my idea, and you can see the finished one here is nasty and goopy, but uh, it'll it'll work for you know uh, function over over form. These will go in there once I trim them and get them all working. Uh, get mounted in there, and I'm going to put a plate on the bottom so they can be bolted in place. And uh, then we'll run the linkage up on the inside, and you can see uh, right here is where the uh, linkage horns will come out, and that's what these are, these big 3D printed assemblies with stainless bolts. Uh, so we'll hook up in there. We've got nice big arms, so hopefully we get some nice travel on these. Um, you know, fingers crossed that uh, these work really well. They will. I know they will. It'll be fine. Put waterproof connectors on here. They'll go to the box. Fin one, fin two. And once those are rigged up, this thing's going to be ready for the water for trimming. Making some of these. These are the uh, horns that are going to go on our heavy duty uh, servo majiggers here. You know, like this. Dur, 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 dur. Um, I want to make sure that because we got 70 pounds of torque with these uh, little servos that we have horns that will take it if they need it. Not that we're going to put 70 pounds on it, but, um, so I use two plated wheel collars with a big piece of 16th inch brass rod, quarter inch wide. The trick to these is making sure that, uh, that hole is perfectly aligned between wheel collar, brass, wheel collar. Um, I'm going to show you how I do it. Here is the secret sauce. Look at this. So we've got wheel collar, brass, wheel collar, but the secret is the piece of 1 8 aluminum tube. Solder will not stick to aluminum but it will to the wheel collars and the brass. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm just gonna use a little bit of liquid flux here. I'm gonna get that all around the outside. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and solder this up. And in theory, if I do this correctly, we should be able to just slip the little aluminum tube right out when we're done. All right, moment of truth. We'll see here. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, oh, come on. There we go. We did it. So now we can uh, cut this off, and the solder did not fill that, by the way. That's just water. Um, then we'll end up with this. We can drill our mounting holes for the linkage rods and uh, start throwing these things in there. All right, here are our linkages. I still have to trim that one, I just noticed. Um, but we got them all rigged up. Now, one interesting thing about these servos, I didn't realize they're 180 degree servos. So I am going to absolutely need to uh, set up the endpoints in the radio. Now, <clears throat> what will end up happening, of course, this is going to be like this. This is going to be like this. Now, if these were just linked together with a Y splitter, this is what they would do. Uh oh. Uh oh. Sharks doing barrel rolls. But because I've got each one of these running to a separate channel in my receiver, I can just simply reverse one of them and then they'll be working in the same direction. So a lot more flexibility if you do it that way. You know, if each lead rather than ganging them together with a Y splitter, if you just put them in a separate channel, if you got them, you end up with way more flexibility to do cool things later on. So maybe if he wants to do barrel rolls with the shark later on, he can uh, go ahead and rig that up. One thing that we talked about was 
active role control with this, I don't know that we need to do it and it would require um, a different receiver than what we've got, which has built-in stabilization capabilities. I can do it with a pair of automatic pitch controllers, but that's almost $120 worth of automatic pitch controllers. And uh, again, um, I don't think we need it. We'll see if we need to, we can talk to him and see if he wants to make the investment. But uh, for now, just gonna rig them up separately and they'll just uh, do their thing together. All right, we've got Shark going. Um, kind of. That's weird. Um, fins are working really, really good. I'll show you the uh, linkages for that in a second. So that should be really good. Now you can see these are like centrally mounted in the Shark and I've got them canted so that they're in line, they're parallel to the longitudinal axis of the shark, um, but you see they're they're actually up a little bit from where they're modeled. Um, so these can control depth, but not pitch because they're in the middle of the shark, which is why I want these back here. I'm hoping once you start moving through the water, those will provide a little bit of drag so that when this goes down, he'll actually be able to pitch and not just submerge. So, I don't know, we'll see. We will see. But uh, here's the throttles and there's the eyeballs going. Forward and reverse. But, here's the weirdness. Watch these motors. I'm gonna go full forward and then I'm gonna take my finger off the, the stick. So here we go. What the heck is going on? It's like forward only works for whatever, five seconds, and then it decides to cut out. I don't know anything about these electronic speed controllers, but apparently I'm going to do some more reading to figure out what the heck is going on here. I don't know. But regardless, um, Billy's ready for the water. So I think before we do that, because it's such a beautiful day out, I'm going to take advantage of it. I'm going to do the final fill. And then uh, in the meantime, I can read up on what the heck is going on with those speed controllers. So Logan figured it out. Um, something I haven't really run into before, but it is the low voltage protection feature, which comes by default at 3.2 volts per cell, but I'm running a 12 volt sealed out acid battery. So it says in here, if you're running something like that to turn it off and what you'll see as a symptom is what? Uh, it'll reduce power and then over the course of five seconds, if it doesn't correct itself, it'll cut power. Right. These are a major, major, major pain in the buttocks to program, but we're gonna give it a try. So we can actually set it to non-protection mode, which is uh, what we want. Mm -hmm. All right, before I forget, here's the setup for the uh, linkages in the bottom there. So these are uh, made a pocket on the top that they rest in, and then just a zap strap locks them down. And we got linkages that run up to the front and uh, drive the fins. So nice, compact package. I like it. Um, we're going to bust out our... Filler, fill up some holes, and uh, tomorrow we can sand and do final prime on this baby. Well, you can see I'm a little sweaty because it's like 87 degrees outside, and uh, we're sanding Billy. Got him sanded up and uh, got a little coat of primer on there. I think we're going to be in good shape. We'll do a nice thick coat of primer and a nice thick coat of paint, and uh, he's going to be looking really good. 
And the other thing you'll notice is we got uh, a gigantic sea view sitting on the bench. So we pulled it out. Logan started cleaning up the uh, windows. I started applying the resin detail pieces to the upper deck. Gonna start working on the lights. Uh, it's turning out really good. So, call it a day. Grab something cold to drink, work on some emails. Hit the ground running tomorrow. So we are working on things on a new day. It's Wednesday morning and uh, Jason and Logan are here. And they are packing up the first of the Nautilus kits to go out. We're still waiting on a few things. We got some Google eyes coming and some upgraded RAM and tilting prop assembly parts, which should be here any day. But we're packing up the orders. We got them all around this perimeter of the room here. I've got another five kits coming from my supplier overseas. So getting ready to ship these things out. Big Sea View is going. I got these parts all primed. Um, got to do a final sand and get rid of some of the uh, little stripe. Actually, they filled in really good. We're probably going to be okay. Um, waiting on some LED lights to do in the back here, but. What I'm working on right now is uh, figuring out the installation of the control bridge in this area. But before that gets installed, I can get it set. But before it gets installed, this is all gonna get painted, um, the windows installed and everything ready to go. And Billy is ready for the uh, pool. I have a hunch this thing is gonna float like way up here, but We'll see. I'd hate to think I have to pull foam out, but I don't know. We'll see. There's a big battery, 12 amp battery in those gigantic motors. We'll just have to see where it floats. Is this dry? Dry enough. Dry enough. I think we're in good shape. All right, this is the inaugural dip for Billy the Shark. Um, Billy's got some heft to him. I think Billy weighs about 50 pounds. I'm guessing. Um, no idea. Never been in the water, so let's see if he floats and where he floats. <laughs> That's not bad. Wow. Okay. I knew he was going to be like positively buoyant. God, he's big. Holy cow. Okay, we do have a vent. Throw some weights on him. We'll start by throwing weights on his back. And then once we figure out how much weight, we'll put it in his belly. We're gonna need more than that. I really, really love these duck weights, by the way. You can form them really easily just by hand. Yeah, that, that, that didn't do too much. Oh, that might be just about right. Yeah. Okay, well, that'll work. So, four bars. I think what it was is there was air trapped in the gill pocket, and when I hit the throttle, it blew all the air out. All right, well, I think we got to take it out. We'll figure out this whole speed controller situation. Okay, so, I mean, Kind of good, kind of bad. Those motors are doing the same thing that they did yesterday. They're cutting off after like five seconds, which is weird because we reprogrammed them. 
Um, so I have no idea how quick shark is uh, because the throttles cut out and they operate on a low power setting if they detect a low voltage. So that's not good. The other thing that we found out, if you look down at them, when we engaged the thrusters, it blew a bunch of air out of those gill chambers. And so now he's sitting just barely, barely, barely positively buoyant. Um, so we got to take some weight out and um, I think we need to move it back because he definitely wants to dive with any sort of thrust whatsoever straight to the bottom straight down and I was really hoping those fins in the back would help with that but and anyway for a first time in the water I'd say that this is not you know a failure by any stretch of the imagination that's I forgot how big that shark is <laughs> that thing is crazy but we'll get him out throw them back on the bench, figure out this whole motor situation, and then move on to trimming part two. So we just got shipment in. I'm excited about this one. This is supposed to be a pretty darn cool boat. I bought this, I think it's out of Michigan. Um, it came in an awfully banana shaped box though. We're gonna see what happened. Getting closer. UPS store did a pretty good job, but uh, it all depends on how evil the UPS truck driver was when they're transporting it. So, we got ourselves an Angle Gato. Gato. Looks like whoever built this did a good job. This was a, a gentleman, his brother passed away and had been working on this for a long time. Other than some railing damage, which is pretty typical um, and easily fixed. Uh, lost a cleat and uh, a couple little supporty majiggers for the upper little bridge area there. I think it, it actually weathered pretty well. Dry hole. Woo wee. Looks like some kind of emergency float majigger thingy. This is a little spinny thing. It's like a clutch. It's spring-loaded. Could flip this over real quick. Pump? No, it's like a geared... Oh, look! Ah! That moves up here. Oh, it's periscopes. Periscopes, or is that maybe the rotating antenna? Uh, or radar, I bet. Like a ping-pong ball for... Flotation? Flotation? Well, retracting... Retracting bow planes, and then we got a Groutner 6-volt pump. 
that connects here. It'll take a minute to go through. Just a minute. Be like the other one, just gut the whole thing and start from scratch. But if this works, there, there'd be no point in doing that. You just got to figure out how it works. Well, I got 15 minutes before I have to head out to my appointment. We got another box. Apparently, he sent absolutely anything and everything that his brother had. So, and that's a heavy, heavy box. So I'm kind of excited to see what's in there. We got plans, sub. Oh my God. A Roby F14 radio, which there was the receiver and a decoder in here. So that's good. Got something heavy in there? Yeah, it's on the bottom too. Well, lots of extra stuff in here, which is good. We get replacement hatches and cleats and wheels and Airplanes. guns. Got a bunch of spare parts in here. Holy man, like, you got spare everything's. Spare T Max 2. I wonder if he was going to upgrade to the, the T Max 2 dive system. There's a battery. Yeah, that looks like a battery. Paperwork, that's what that is. All the documentation, photos, all the spare uh, dive planes. All kinds of information on it. All right, it is Thursday, which is the last day that I'm going to be working here this week because I'm off to my consult job in Florida. Won't be back until late Wednesday of next week. Um, but got lots planned today in an effort to uh, catch up before we go. Well, let's take a look. We got in our uh, LED lights for the big sea view. I like these. I fired them up. And you know what's weird about these? This manufacturer has the power wires reversed. This is the same company i believe that did the red leds for billy the shark back there um white is negative weirdos but this fits absolutely perfectly with just a little bit of trimming fits in there like that pretty badass i think that looks really cool futuristic looking i got uh, i got 10 for like eight dollars on amazon uh, I'm going to peel off the rubber grommet majiggers, and then that's going to go also underneath in the floodlight holes right there. Oh, right there. Um, and then we also got some uh, 10 mil LEDs that are going to be going in the back of the Cadillac fins back here. I got parts printing for rudders, dive planes, and props, as well as all the funky ladder rung majiggers that go along the side. Here and then I also did the recesses for the radar and the sail bridge right here and the antennas. So got lots going on here. Progress, progress. Talked to the owner of Billy and uh, he loves how it looked in the water. But we're going to try one more thing here because under throttle, Billy wants to dive. He wants to go straight down. These fins in the back were not sufficient to create that fletching effect. I think they only really come into play at extreme speeds. Um, and by then, Billy's already doing an, uh, a nosedive or a headstand in the bottom of the pool. So what we're going to do, I'm going to pull this section out really quickly. We're going to slit the back of these fins and put a clear extension that angles up. And that'll, that'll just create a downward force on the tail, so under speed, I think the tail will drop and, uh, and Billy will be less inclined to do a handstand. Um, at slow speeds, at you know normal speeds, he works so good. It works so good. It's just when you really goose it, he decides to do funky things. All right, let's make some slats. Just a cutoff wheel. This is PLA plastic, by the way. Done. Slots. Billy the shark has got the first coat of paint. So, white underbelly. 
I mean, you're looking at reference photos and there's basically white gums and then like red creases. So we're gonna use a paint pen, draw all this in. Logan's very excited about being able to try his hand at making this look really realistic. So the teeth will all stay white and then we'll do the, the gums with that reddish creases and stuff. We're gonna let this dry really well and then hit it with some semi-gloss clear to protect it. And then uh, that'll give Logan some time to mess with this. And then if I feel comfortable that it's not gonna get messed up by putting it on the stand, we'll flip them over and uh, get some gray on there as well. Last but not least, uh, I wanna tear into this uh, new Baleo that we unpacked yesterday. The six volt, 12 amp hour sealed lead acid battery that came with this was completely dead. It had one volt. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get all of this figured out and see how it all works. Try and figure out all of these cool rotating and pumping and moving uh, midjiggers. I'm sure it's gonna be absolutely no problem figuring everything out and we'll have it all figured out in 10 minutes. Um, I'm super impressed with the individual that did this. He's taken a lot of really, really unique solutions to some problems. I wanna, I wanna start at the back here, okay? So you can see these linkages, you know, running the back here. These bellow seals, they feel a little hard, but they look like they're still in pretty good shape. Um, what would, we're gonna go all the way to the back here. So let's start back here. These are contact pads for the LED lighting for the conning tower. So pads go, they, they touch, they run up the tower, or sorry, up the upper hull and then into the tower for the LED lights in there. And I haven't tested those. I'm gonna, I'm gonna test them here shortly, but see what they're connected to. They're connected to these linkage rods. So I'm assuming buried inside here is um, uh, 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 wire connections to the linkage rods. And so these are actually acting as um, uh, 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 conduits for the, the power for the LED lights. Kind of a brilliant solution. So you have no contact, uh, you know, perforations on the outside. Super unique. I've never seen that before. This is a waterproof motor um, that's running through a 90 degree gearbox right there. And then this spins and uh, it, you see it's like spring loaded. This is cool engineering, man. This guy knew what he was doing. And that mates to this. It spins through here. He's got aluminum mounting blocks on here. This is so cool. Spins this shaft that runs along the whole thing through another universal into a worm gear that goes into a little silicone tube coupler that runs up into the tower and spins the radar. How cool is that? And here you can see the LED lighting comes up here to these contact points which uh, which touch here. Those are the contacts there. And he used for flotation here ping pong balls which are actually kind of cool. They're really rigid, you know, they're not going to collapse. So um, <laughs> interesting solution. I think that's so cool. Um, since we're here, let's take a look at what else we got going on here. This is, what is this? This looks like, oh, look at that. So those um, spin and, oh man, not only does the gun turn but it also moves up and down. What the heck? To quote my favorite guy on Vice Grip Garage on YouTube, I'll be dipped. And then this is, oh boy. This is a pump, hooks up to a pump in the bow here. I think that gun shoots water. There's an intake, here's the pump, pumps out into this nipple. The nipple connects here and then to the gun. I bet this thing swivels, tilts, and shoots water. I'll be dipped. This guy did some pretty darned cool stuff. 
And then look at this. We've, we've also got an interface here that spins this radar. Now this feels like it's jammed up a little bit. This might need a little bit of lubrication, but I don't have to see. Oh, I see. This, I would be willing to bet, is supposed to connect here. And then that way both of the radars spin together on the same motor. Wow, that is so cool. All right, let's keep moving here. So we got, we got power for the radars. It's coming out here. Obviously, I can't get back here. You know, one, one thing that would probably not be a bad idea is to cut another access hole back here so you can access the motors and everything. Um, we got all of our intakes for the piston ballast system. We've got our angle control board for the ballast systems. And I believe these are sub systems for that, the K1 and K3 boards. And then we got servos here. This is a lot like that type seven that we were talking about. So these are little mini servos on a cam that switches and depresses these little micro switches. Cool. Okay. Then we got piston, we got our pressure sensor in there. Uh, and then the receiver lives way under here. Well, and more, more servos here. I assume these are probably big ones for the uh, die planes and rudders and that kind of stuff. And I don't know why, but man, this thing was stuffed full of receiver batteries. There's one on the charger that I have right now that looks like it's gonna hold a charge, but these two were just kind of like stuffed in there. I don't know if these were backup batteries or what or if they're like powering something different but uh those are in there too oh and then this this is the swivel for the uh for the gun <laughs> wow so cool um and then we got our bow retract system I, i'm assuming this is like a stock bow retract for angle i've actually not seen it before pretty neat though um, you know rotary shaft in here that's belt driven on a worm gear or sorry a, a beveled 90 degree gear that uh, extends and retracts the bow planes and then you've got your bow plane servo right here that uh, tilts it up and down and then that's the pump for our gun holy cow um, super creative, you know, um, uh, uh, um, building techniques. Now, one thing I did not get was the door, the, the, the panel that keeps this thing all waterproof. Now, fortunately, that's going to be one of the easiest things to fabricate. I would, I would grab some quarter inch Lexan, um, cut it to size and then, uh, you know, just drill these holes out and everything. Uh, this is a nice soft, rubber gasket he's still got grease on there um looks like it's really well done I, I like it 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 should work really good to keep everything all sealed up um you know provided everything works the only thing i'm you know concerned about is how all of this goes you know i've got this random connection for the uh the ballast system here just got to figure out if that's supposed to be tucked into something. This, I think, is the other end of the receiver antenna sticking out there. You know, we've, we've got this servo connection that comes out of this servo and this micro switch. Don't know what that controls. We've got this random little uh, three volt power deal that runs in again to this switch. I wonder if that's lights. If he has them rigged up on a on a switch, well, the other end goes into the ballast system. I don't know, man. Very interesting. You know, I think if you were to take a day, gut the uh, existing old board there, and this boat comes with the brand new T Max ballast system controller. Uh, that would completely upgrade the ballast system to the newest generation of Engel ballast uh, control. 
So um, that would do away with, I think, this whole system here, as well as this whole system here. So um, I, that would be a really worthwhile upgrade, I think. Somebody is going to have a great time figuring this out and getting this running. Um, like I said, just a, a amazing creativity on behalf of the builder when he put this together. I think you're going to need a bigger boat. Well, that's it for another week uh, here at the dry docks. Uh, I'm going to get packed up, ready for an early AM flight to Florida tomorrow. Um, I am going to leave you guys uh, with a couple of things. If you like these, please do like and subscribe. It helps a lot. Tell your friends. This is a ton of fun. Uh, love to hear from you. Drop some comments below. Shoot me an email, bob at nautilusdrydocks.com. Uh, with that, we're going to leave you uh, with a couple of videos. Uh, let's take a look at uh, our first shark over here. And uh, what should we leave out with over here? Here's an earlier sea view that I did. That's kind of a cool one. And uh, it's scary how weirdly young I look. <laughs> you guys have a great weekend and we'll catch you next time.